All right, so we're playing tetherball, and you have a long pole, and you stand around underneath it, and you whack this ball at the end of a string. And I say it's a three-meter string, and it's at an angle of 10 degrees below the horizon. Okay, so as soon as I know that the ball is moving in a circle, it's going around in a circle like this, I immediately jump up and say, look, this is centripetal acceleration, and it's inward. So this is the direction of the acceleration. Why is that so important? Because I know, first thing I write down, is the vector sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. And so the vector sum of the forces, which is, can also be called the resultant force, right? the vector sum of the forces must be pointing in this direction because that's the direction of the acceleration. And so what are the forces? The forces are the force of gravity and the tension. So these two forces have to add to give me the resultant force in this direction. How do we do that? Well, we've got the force of gravity. Let's add them like vectors, nose to tail. So force of gravity plus the tension. So how big is the tension? Well, the tension has to be long enough so that when we add these two together, we get a resultant force that's horizontal. So there's your resultant force. Whoops, resultant force. There's your tension, and there's your force of gravity. So the force of gravity plus the tension are the two forces that give me my mass times acceleration. Okay. Now we can just go in with our trigonometry and say, okay, this is 10 degrees. Yes, it doesn't look like 10 degrees, but um, it is, should be. And we can say, all right, the tangent of 10 degrees of theta, let's just say theta, is opposite over adjacent is equal to force of gravity over mass times acceleration, okay, or the resultant force. So now I can go and I can solve mass times acceleration, the resultant force, is equal to force of gravity divided by tangent theta. Right? And so what is tangent theta? What is tangent of 10 degrees? Well, I, in the next video, I talk about how we can estimate this pretty well. But one way we can estimate is just look at it and draw my, my triangle a little better. So for instance, look, if this is a 90 degree angle, this is a 45 degree angle right through the, the diagonals there, right? And so this would be about, you know, this would be, this would be too much. That's about 10, 20, 30, right? So 10 degrees would be about like that. So I didn't draw this very well. 10 degrees would probably be more, like even further. 10 degrees would probably be back here. So why do we do that? We do that now because this is MA. This is a total force acting on the ball. If this is a force of gravity, then the resultant force is a force of gravity times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus a little more. Okay, so a little more than 5. Um, and so then the tangent is 1 fifth. So this is going to be on the order of 5 times the force of gravity. Okay, in the next video I show it's actually closer to 6, but this is fine for now. 5 times the force of gravity equals 5 times mg, right? And so we can say, look, acceleration is then equal to, we look at these two guys, mass times acceleration is equal to 5 times mg, the m's cancel, and the acceleration is on the order of 5 gravities, or 50 meters per second squared, okay? Excellent. So let's say I'm interested in finding what is the velocity? I know that the acceleration is centripetal acceleration v squared divided by r. And so then v squared is equal to the centripetal acceleration times r, which is about 50 meters per second squared. Or in the next one I show you, you know, it is 60 meters per second squared. You could put that in if you like. 
um, times the radius. Now, what's the radius? Because this is three meters long here. But again, if this is a very small angle, and I didn't draw this quite right, if this is three meters, this is very close to three meters. The adjacent and the hypotenuse of a very small angle are about the same. So this is about three meters, and we end up with 150 meters squared per second squared. Okay, do I like those units? I love them because the velocity squared should be meters squared per second squared. So what is the um, square root of that? Square root, let's see, 12 squared is 144, 13 squared is 169. So we're dealing with, you know, 12 and a half meters per second, something like that is the speed of this moving around. Is that fast? Well, that's slightly faster than you can run in a good sprint, slightly faster than Michael Johnson can run. Um, and that's about how fast you whack a ball around in a circle when you play tetherball. Sounds good. And the last thing is I wanted to know the tension. And again, when we look at this drawing, this vector drawing, again, what do we have? We have the force of gravity plus the tension gives us a resultant force. We recognize that the tension, I mean, I could go out and show again, the tension is about the same as a resultant force here. It's about six times the force of gravity. It's going to be on the order of, uh, let's, see, force, uh, let's see, this was a, five, a 0.5 kilogram ball. So that's uh, five newtons. So the tension is going to be on the order of 25, 30 newtons.